And this is today's special ingredient. It's called Vegeta. I've never heard of this before until you guys brought it up and asked me to give it a try. This is the MSG of Croatia. Now I'm familiar with Croatia from its beautiful pebble beaches. They also used to have gladiators there. And it was where Game of Thrones was also filmed. Look at it in Southeast Europe. It is a bucket list for me. So my hopes is that this will be amazing on some steaks. But check it out. No artificial flavors. It is a mixture of vegetables and spices, which is perfect for this guy. What do you mean? Why are you not gonna eat vegetables? I'm not gonna be on. Oh, you're, you're my friend. Oh, my friend. But if you take a look at the ingredient list, the main one is salt. So I gotta really be careful not to make it too salty. But hopefully this is going to make the steaks incredible. Well, let's find out. As for today's cook, I'll be using these three beautiful picanhas. They are an Australian Wagyu Marbling Score 5. They have great intramuscular fat on them. And most importantly, it's one of the greatest pieces of meat you can put it in your mouth. Now to season it, I usually keep it really traditional. Only salt and nothing else. However, let's find out if Vegeta can make it better. First, I seasoned all of them with salt, but notice that the middle one did not have the same amount. Then I went with freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder and two of them, but the middle one I did not do anything else, as it's gonna be our experimental steak. For that, I decided to add a good amount of the Croatian MSG. I was generous with it, but did not overdo it, because now that they're all completely seasoned, the next thing to do is to go ahead and back them up, vacuum seal them, and cook them sous vide at 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. This will cook them to perfection because I want to do one more test with this special ingredient and that is to make a delicious compound butter. First, I started with room temperature butter followed by two teaspoons of the Croatian MSG. Mixed everything together and there we have it. This will be applied to one of the steaks and hopefully we'll find out which one is gonna taste best. But just in case we don't, I decided to go ahead and make an awesome side dish from Croatia. This is called Barak and my hopes is that it's going to be great. Here's how I did it. Into a skillet I threw in some avocado oil, then immediately went in with some onions. Mix that up for a little bit and threw in some ground lamb. I mixed this up and cooked it until everything was no longer red. Then I seasoned it with salt, followed by garlic paste, a tiny bit of cumin, followed by today's special ingredient, and a good amount of tomato paste. Now we want to mix this up and cook it until it's fully cooked. Because in the end, this is what we're left with. An extremely flavorful ground lamb. This is so easy to make and so delicious that will go along with anything. However, here's the next step. Into a boy I threw in an egg, followed by some Greek yogurt and melted butter. Mixed everything well because we're going to be using it for our pastry. This is the consistency I was left with. Now for the dough, I'm going to be using this. I warn you right now, this is super fragile. Take a look at it. It almost looks like paper. So first I lay down one sheet, followed by another since it's going to be our base. Then I applied that egg wash mix we just made, added another sheet right on top, and repeated the process four times. As the next thing to do was to go ahead and add the filling. Now you really want to be generous with this. However, don't overdo it because you gotta roll it up. And doing this, you want to make it as tight as possible, but don't let it rip. Because once it's done, add some more egg wash on the exterior so that it does not break on you. Transfer it to a baking dish. Add a little bit more of that egg wash. Throw in some sesame seeds for coloring. And into the oven it goes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit. Because once the time is up, you should be left with this. Borak. Now take a look at it. It looks great. However, it definitely needs some type of sauce. And to make it, it is super simple. I first started with Greek yogurt, followed by a tiny bit of garlic paste, some salt, lemon juice, lemon zest, and a tiny bit of cayenne. Mix everything well and your sauce is done. Shout out to my good old friend Chef John, because pairing this up with Barak is perfect. And hopefully it's going to taste fantastic. We're about to find out real shortly, because by this time my steaks were fully cooked. So I immediately opened them up, sat them down on a cooling rack, and since the Vegeta already did its job, I went ahead and removed it. And as always, you gotta pat it dry before putting a sear on a sous vide steak. Because now I know exactly what you're thinking. I know my steaks don't look that good right now, but watch this. Alright everybody, here we got our beautiful steak with an incredible side dish. I've never done anything like this. That is Croatian side dish. 
It looks Let's super go. interesting. Haven't seen anything like that. It looks like a pie or something. Listen, enough to chatting because I am excited to try this. Let's give yeah. this a go, okay? okay? Give me your brutal, honest opinion, okay? All right, let's go this direction today. Please dig in, Leo. Ooh, that's far. That's the Ooh. thing with the sous vide table. The sous vide table is real big, everybody. The Google Foods table is, you know, it's a little bit more, uh, let's call it intimate. <laughs> intimate. Enough talking. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oof. Uh, wow, that is a really good steak. Nothing like bikanya, bro. I get asked all the time, Guga, what is your favorite steak? That's it, everybody. Does not get any better than this. This is a really good steak, insanely beefy, very, very juicy and tender. If you haven't cooked bikanya sous vide yet, it does look a little bit more rare, everybody. That's because of the nature of the cut, but I can promise you, it is perfectly medium rare and delicious. Why are you going for another one, man? It's just so good, I have to. <laughs> okay, enough. Let's, Let's go, go for the second one. Before Please. Leo eats Dig it. In. Now let me know if this one tastes different and most importantly, if it's a good difference or a bad difference. I'm curious. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mm. A very interesting flavor there. Very different. Tastes complex, almost like a little bit earthy. I enjoyed that, how about you? I like it, I feel like a little bit of extra richness and savoriness as well, so that's always a bonus for me. <laughs> I think it's a really good steak. It's tasty, it kind of reminds me of some Latin flavors that I've had. Yes, that's what reminded me as well when I tasted this raw ingredient. By the way, it's an ingredient, okay? Okay. Oh. okay. So it is yeah. very, very good. I think I would take that one over the control. Wow. I agree. Okay. But now I want to go for the last one to compare. Nah, let's nah, give nah. it a try. Let's, let's, let's try this. The Croatian side dish? Yeah. Come on. Honestly, I don't even know how to pronounce the name. I don't want to say it wrong. That's what that is. <laughs> I am going to put this little uh, sauce here, which is basically a yogurt sauce with a little bit of citrus. Let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. I've never tasted anything like this in my life. It's like a chewy dough. It's like a crispy, chewy at the same time. The actual meat pie is really nice and flavorful. The sauce for me is what really throws me over the edge because it's completely different than the actual meat. The meat is mainly savory and salty flavors and then that yogurt light freshness that comes in with it. It's a nice balance for this dish and I kind of like it. Let me know in the comments down below, Croatian friends, if I did this right or wrong, I'd love to know because I like it. It's quite enjoyable. I highly recommend you guys giving it a try. It's very delicious. Enough about the side dish. Let's go for the last one. I'm excited. Please dig in. We're gonna have big arms in this table, right? It's not a very intimate table here. No. <laughs> no intimacy here. <laughs> no intimacy here at all. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Mmm. Damn. Surprisingly, that tastes incredible to yeah. me. How about you guys? I like it. I, I'm having a hard time deciding which of these two I like more. I like it but I'm very thrown off by the flavors on it. I, I'm gonna say this, it might sound like an idiot. It tastes a little bit like seaweedish to me. I don't know really? if I'm super off. I could be very off. I'm, I'm not getting tastes, that at it, all. It tastes, <laughs> it tastes earthy, it tastes, oh, it's just so different. It tastes I don't know. like a bunch of vegetables combined together. I would say so, yeah. It is called Vegeta, everybody. I'm thinking of a different kind of Vegeta, but. Right. <laughs> Are you thinking about Dragon Ball Z? I'm talking about anime, baby. So if I eat a lot of this, does that mean I go Super Saiyan? Yes, it does. <laughs> now. One of them had compound butter and the other didn't. Which one was better to you? I don't Make know, a decision. man. I don't know. Honestly, it's so good that you can use with the butter and without the butter. It does not matter, everybody. I'll go with the compound butter just because. That's because it's butter. It's butter. I agree with the butter. It adds more savory <laughs> richness. It's, come on, man. Okay, to go against you guys, I go without, without the butter, everybody. Ah, uh, what a party pooper. Thank you guys for the suggestion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one. Let me know. What country MSG I should try next? Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.